We're going to go over normal respiratory mechanics of the rib cage with my dear friend here. When we're talking about mechanics of the rib cage during respiration, inhalation and exhalation, we're focusing predominantly on three moves with a few other moves thrown in there. Generally, every time you inhale, the rib cage ought to expand in all directions. As you exhale, the rib cage ought to compress in all directions. Let's unpack that and see what that looks like. The first movement that is very important is the bucket handle movement. Predominantly occurring in the lower portion of the rib cage, that is the portion of the rib cage and the ribs that do not have a direct attachment to the sternum, these ribs down here, 8, 9, 10, although the action does also occur to an extent in the upper portion of the rib cage. But with the bucket handle action, what's going to occur is the ribs are going to move laterally and superiorly, or they're going to move outward from the body and upward. So as you inhale, you should see these ribs expand upward and outward, laterally and superiorly. And during the exhale, they should come back down to their starting position. Breathe in, lateral and superior movement of the rib cage. Breathe out, back to the start position. The next movement that occurs in the rib cage is pump handle. That occurs predominantly on the anterior aspect of the rib cage in the upper ribs and involves movement of the sternum from the side. When you breathe in, the pump handle action is anterior forward and superior upward movement of the rib cage. So as my man here breathes in, if my hand was the sternum, the sternum and the ribs would move in that direction anterior, forward, and superior, upward. As this man breathes out, the rib cage should drop down back to the starting position. Breathe in, anterior and superior movement of the upper ribs. As you breathe out, return back to the start. The next very important movement of the rib cage is posterior expansion of the thorax involving the back side of the rib cage. As you breathe in, the ribs should move posterior backward and superior upward, like that. During the exhale, the ribs ought to return to their normal starting position. As you breathe in, posterior and superior movement of the rib cage. As you breathe out, return back to the start position. Other minor movements that occur in the rib cage, the rib cage to a degree does elevate or lift upwardly as a unit. That occurs based on the scalenes attachments to the first and second rib. Now the cool thing about the first rib is it's a synarthroidal joint, meaning that there's no synovial fluid, it has minimal movement. So if I create movement at this rib cage, or at this portion of the rib cage, the entire rib cage ought to lift as a unit because if I lift this and this joint can't move on its own, everything's got to go with. The scalenes, since they are a primary muscle of inspiration, they attach to the first rib and the second rib and attach to the neck. Every time you breathe in, the rib cage will lift upwardly to a degree. That being said, that will be checked to an extent by the internal obliques, which attach to the lower portion of the rib cage. This muscle in particular helps depress the rib cage. So we have this tug of war that leads to also superior and inferior lengthening or top down lengthening, lengthening and expansion of the rib cage. And it is the combination of all of those movements, bucket handle, pump handle, posterior thorax expansion, rib cage elevation, and rib cage depression that make up normal respiratory mechanics in the rib cage.